Look who's back with us, the author of the terrific book, There's No Free Lunch. He's an economist as well, a terrific one, David Bonson. David, what did you make of Madison's story? Because now you see this fight. We've got Elon Musk really mad. SAP Global gave his electric car company, Tesla, a lower environmental social governance score than Philip Morris, the maker of Marlboro cigarettes. What do you make of that? Yeah, there's been so, so many stories like this for years since this ESG thing took off as a big marketing scam on Wall Street. That's what it was, a way to raise money by getting higher fees to tell people that they're doing something virtuous and it doesn't cost them anything. And they raised trillions of dollars. And yet, you have stories like that with Philip Morris having a higher score than Tesla. But I've always thought my favorite one is uh, Facebook being the number one waiting in the BlackRock ESG portfolio. And the G in ESG stands for governance. Mark Zuckerberg gets 100 votes for every one vote regular shareholders get. And that's the standard of governance. governance. The whole thing is irrational, <laughs> You know, when Facebook, Facebook has allowed criminals on its site, I remember UK, Theresa May, was upset in the floor of parliament about what was going on with social media, allowing terrorists to signal each other on social media, including Facebook. That was, so that's really great governance over at at Facebook, you know, this looks like it violates the federal law ERISA. They have a fiduciary obligation to get the best returns for shareholders, period, not manipulate it for whatever their agenda is. Well, that's certainly correct. And in spirit, we know that. A fiduciary duty means you're there to get the best return for the owners of a business. What they do legally to play gymnastics with all this is say that, oh, long term, these environmental things are going to hurt returns and so we can justify it now. I have no problem with them having ESG funds. And investors that say they don't want oil and gas, don't invest in oil and gas. If you and I don't want to invest in, yeah. in Facebook or another tech company or another social justice justice cause, we don't have to. I'm not asking them to stop those companies from existing. See, that's the difference. I want a free and open market where people can make the best decisions possible. It's the other side that is trying to limit choice in the marketplace. That's right, and in a top-down way. And given how top-down crazy it is in D.C. and how top-down crazy it is with their idea of what's right and wrong in Congress, watch this fight break out between a uh, Democrat New York Congressman Representative Nadler, Jerry Nadler, he's trying to claim not forcing two-year-olds to wear a mask as, quote, child abuse. You're going to see Congressman Chip Roy go after him on that. Watch. When we have a pandemic, like COVID-19 pandemic that we had, two-year-olds should have been required to wear masks. It would be child abuse for parents not to do that. Your two-year-old should be forced to be masked. That is what the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee just said here on the floor of the House of Representatives, that the power of the government, the full power of the federal government, should be a part of ensuring and forcing your children, your two-year-old child, to be masked. Your rule would, would require a bank to ask the question of a small business person, what's your race, what's your ethnicity, what's your sexual preference? Are you gay? Are you a woman? And all of this data is going to go to your agency, and we don't have the slightest idea how you're going to use it, except you say you're going to publish it. That's Senator Kennedy grilling an official from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. What do you make about everything you just heard? I heard a lot of things that I'm, I'm a little blown away. Um, I, I was hoping to never have to talk about or even think about that embarrassing period in our nation's history when we were masking babies, uh, where there was a 0.0 percent uh, mortality and, and infection rate and so forth. We know it's not just babies, two-year-olds. It's almost like Natalie was, was trying to get people to Got make it. fun of them. I mean, even kids K through uh, uh, 12th grade, the, the risks were just absolutely uh, minuscule. It. And so this mandatory masking thing was absurd. And I assume the connection there to wanting all this data is that they're talking about the statism in an unaccountable bureau like the yeah. Consumer Financial Protection having more access to information that they can use in these other kind of dangerous ways. David Bunsen. As a classical liberal, I'm against it. I think it's dangerous. Got it. Thank you so much for joining us, David.